Good afternoon. Happy Monday. Josh's severe weather. I hope you all had a great weekend. We're going to talk about what's going on in the tropics and some signs of potential development by the weekend here off the southeast coast. Also take a look at some severe weather as well. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate y'all's time today. Um, here is what we're taking a look at, the potential for something to develop close to the East Coast or Florida here as we get towards the weekend with a couple of uh, disturbances expected to maybe combine themselves as they move towards the Leeward Islands here later in the week, Thursday, and then maybe towards Hispaniola, the Cuban area, and the Bahamas towards the weekend. Uh, still some uncertainty in this forecast, but the chances are beginning to grow. We're up to about a 50% now from the National Hurricane Center. And uh, you can see that wave is still a few days away from the Lesser Antilles, but the development chances start to climb from zero to about 50%. So basically a coin flip, but the trend is uh, increasing here, meaning our chances for something to form are starting to climb by the time we get to the end of the week. And Florida is in that potential area where the system could form. Um, but there's still a chance it could try to form near Cuba and head towards the Gulf or uh, try to form a little bit farther north and east and avoid Florida and maybe just brush the southeast coast. Here is a look from Tomer Berg's website of our areas to watch. This is the 50 percent area. Now it's going to be heading into some warmer water, but more uh, more so a more favorable environment for this to develop into something as it starts to pick up a little bit more moisture. Right now, it's not in a great spot to do that, uh, surrounded by a lot of dry air. And I'm going to show you the satellite in a minute. We do have also the potential to see not one, but two systems in the eastern Pacific. And the way this is working out, uh, as you can see from Zoom Earth, all the action last week was in the western Pacific. Now it is shifting with the Madden-Julian oscillation, the MJO, into the central and eastern Pacific, and next week heads into the Atlantic. So we're in a transition from a quieter period in the Atlantic to what should be a more active period here, uh, with this being our first system of what should be multiple systems as we head into the month of August, especially the second and third week on. The ocean heat content is very warm, very high for this time of the year, and really on record, uh, we have not seen it this high in I don't know, just not on record, <laughs> perhaps ever. I don't know. Um, but you can see very high in the Caribbean, high enough to support something in the southeast and into the Gulf of Mexico and cooler over the central Atlantic, but still supportive of a tropical system. Here's a look at our current satellite from tropicaltidbits.com. Nothing super impressive right now in the Atlantic. We are watching a few different features, though. We've got an upper level low here near Cuba. Uh, we've got a front with low pressure here near New England. I talked about that in yesterday's video. Uh, a lot of unstable air um, and fast wind flow aloft heading through the Midwest where we're going to have some severe weather in the next couple of days. And then in the Atlantic, all you see right now are just two little piddly features. This is the wave we're watching, and this is an upper level low that may merge with it. Kind of a naked swirl, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, behind it, we do have another wave coming off of Africa that is going to struggle to develop, but something I think we do need to watch. Uh, and, and the interesting thing is all of these waves here have very little chance of doing anything out in here. It's when we get closer to land is when the opportunity for development uh, starts to climb, meaning we have less time to prepare. So all we can really do right now is just take a look at uh, future forecast models and kind of go out on faith that they're going to work out or at least give us an idea of what's going to come. So here's our tropical wave in here. And this is the uh, upper level low that's got quite a bit of a spin with it, but missing any kind of moisture, kind of a naked swirl. Uh, what's going to have to happen is this system here is going to have to inject some moisture into this feature, which should take over uh, by the time it moves into this area. But we've got another four days before anything likely will pop up from this. If you take a look at the, um, let me get this off the screen here, take a look at the visible satellite here, you can see just a lot of dry air surrounding this system a lot of very stable air in place so it is not in a hurry to develop uh, however um, as it gets closer to land um, as it gets closer to the bahamas and cuba it does have a better chance for development here's a look at the upper level image from cyclone wx and you can see a uh, very well defined upper level feature but just a very piddly looking surface feature with this all the moisture is down in here but as this moves in this direction uh, it may suck up this moisture and it, get it involved with it and give it a better chance to survive. But right now, just a lot of stable dry air uh, being injected in from the north and east, which is very unfavorable to see tropical development. So 
If it's unfavorable, then why are we even talking about it? Well, the European ensembles continue to show a decent chance here, 40 to 50 percent, that we may have a depression here on Thursday or Friday nearer just to the north of Hispaniola and Puerto Rico. And the chances are growing when it gets into the southeast Bahamas on Friday and through the central Bahamas on Saturday. And still a decent chance as it moves northward uh, away from the Bahamas or near the Florida coast here on Sunday and towards the southeast coast and the Outer Banks on Monday and Tuesday. After that, things are a little bit um, less favorable for development, but you can see there's a little bit of a signal for something maybe left over in the Gulf as we get to Tuesday and Wednesday. That's not exactly from this feature, uh, but maybe one that becomes what we call homegrown. Now, a look at the tropical storm probabilities are pretty much nothing until we get to the weekend. This is now Saturday, and we see about a 20% chance of a tropical storm, especially just east of the Bahamas. And then here's a look at Sunday, and a good chance for something, at least as far out as we're getting here, about six, seven days away, this is a good chance. Um, 40, 40%, 30, 40% of a tropical storm, and even a better chance as it gets closer to the North Carolina and Outer Banks area here for Monday into Tuesday. But uh, all the ensembles, generally speaking, are turning this away to the north and east now, which would put it in an area where things are more favorable for development. I had this loaded, and I apologize, but here we go. Uh, weather nerds, this shows all the ensembles, very weak, low-pressure area here. Um, as we get into Thursday night, you see pressures are generally about 1010 millibars, which would mean maybe we have a low pressure system, but nothing really more than that. The stronger solutions in the blue have a more northeasterly track, meaning less likelihood this becomes a land issue. However, we may see more um, support for development as we get into Friday night here near the central Bahamas. And then this is Saturday. And generally speaking, the majority of the solutions with the European ensembles are east of Florida and stay east of Florida. In fact, we don't actually have any one of these showing landfall in Florida. We've got maybe a couple of very minor um, systems, or I shouldn't even say minor systems. If the system goes south, it doesn't develop until it gets into the Gulf of Mexico, and it's pretty weak. If it does develop, it's turning away to the north and east. So the Carolinas and then up into Atlantic Canada is gonna be the most likely place to see this develop. And you can see darker colors here, um, indicating weaker solutions, brighter colors indicating stronger solutions. And the majority of those that do show the strengthening have it moving away from land and into the northwestern Atlantic, uh, where we hope that that's where it goes. The time frame for that's gonna be Monday night, Tuesday, and into early on Wednesday. So here's a look at all the spaghetti plots and very few show support for anything moving into the Gulf. Most show it developing when it gets into about here on Thursday and Friday and then a tropical depression or storm by the end of the weekend or the beginning of next week, about six to seven days from now. And generally speaking, everything turning away, meaning it would avoid the northeastern United States altogether and maybe just clip the Carolinas. So that's what we're looking at right now. Here's a look at the operational European. And you can see it's starting to pick this system up a little bit more tomorrow night into Wednesday. And we start to finally see a little bit of development towards the Bahamas on Friday, but a sloppy looking system until it makes it into the Gulf Stream uh, to the east of Florida. And you can see that here. This is Sunday night at about 7, 8 o'clock Eastern time. And we finally have something developing as it's moving away from Florida and maybe brushing the Outer Banks here Monday night, pulling away by Tuesday. And then you can see the leftover front and may try to spawn something here in the Gulf towards the middle of next week. Nothing super scary at this point, just something we'll have to keep an eye on. Here's another look at the European, and you can see just very little chance of development here the next two to three days. Then chances start climbing as this approaches the Bahamas on Friday night, Saturday morning. Then we finally see development east of Florida, Sunday into early Monday, pulling away from the Outer Banks and avoiding the majority of the eastern seaboard, although it may clip Cape Cod and Nova Scotia here Tuesday night into Wednesday, moving a lot quicker at that point. Then the Bermuda High builds back in, so things quiet down a little bit more. We do have to keep an eye on the southeastern Gulf of Mexico, though, by the middle of next week. Again, that's a ways off, though, from now. Uh, here's a closer look at the European operational, and this is the model that's been the most consistent with our system. And you can see by Friday, we may start to see lowering pressures. Friday night and Saturday, maybe a depression, and then maybe a tropical storm by next Sunday, turning away and moving through the Outer Banks on Monday afternoon and Monday night. And that is that. It's moving very quickly, getting picked up by a trough, not lingering across the eastern United States. Here's a look farther up into the Atlantic. 
lowering pressures and then here comes our system maybe approaching the outer banks here monday afternoon and then moving away from the delmarva and mid-atlantic by monday night tuesday morning maybe coming close to cape cod in the islands as a stronger system tuesday evening and then coming by close to nova scotia by wednesday morning and again this is nine ten days away and i do expect it's going to change but this model has shown us the most agreement amongst all the other models. The ensemble control is in the same boat for the most part, but is a little bit farther to the west over the outer banks here, as you can see. Not a particularly strong system, though, and not showing anything in the Gulf afterwards. Uh, here is a look farther up the east coast, and you can see the same deal here. Monday morning approaching the Carolinas, Monday evening pulling away and strengthening as it moves out over the Gulf, over the Gulf Stream, warmer water, uh, but not really threatening any direct landfall through the middle of next week. Now, the newest Canadian model is coming in. This model has been farther to the west, and you will see it doesn't really develop it at all here through next Friday. Let me show you the last model run because the new one's still trickling in at this time. Uh, but you can see it's showing the development on the Gulf side of Florida and maybe having something come up the west coast of Florida into the Big Bend region. Not a strong system. But you can see this would impact more of the southeastern United States. And as we look a little bit closer, um, we can see that here. It is farther south, weaker with the system, allowing it to take its time to develop until it maybe approaches the Florida Keys and moves into the southeastern Gulf next Saturday. And then we have a weak system, probably just a tropical storm, uh, moving right up the west coast of Florida and then turning away to the north and east, moving through the southeast. So this would be at least a day and a half slower than what the European model is showing. And further complicating things, the GFS still continues to not really show this system forming. It's had a couple of opportunities to show something weak here, and then it just kills it off. And so the GFS is not in agreement yet. So again, we don't have a very clear forecast uh, until the system does develop, if in fact it does that, in about four days. Here's the European Ensemble showing where all the rain is going to go here. And if you are uh, planning trips to the Caribbean, it will be wet at times but you'll see the majority of the rain stays to the north and east of Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, and the Bahamas. And that is good news for vacationers, um, but certainly uh, this moisture is gonna have to end up going somewhere and it could try to make its way into the Southeast here. Uh, but overall, we're gonna see typical rainfall for this time of the year. It won't be fully dry, but it certainly won't be as wet as it could. Here's the GFS ensemble and you can see uh, it is showing a little more moisture heading up into the Bahamas, Florida, and the Southeast here than what the European is showing because the European makes that curve sooner than what the GFS would, would make it. Um, and then if you look at the Canadian ensemble here, I'll show you that in just a second. You can see it's the one that's wettest for Florida as it takes a track of this feature into the Eastern Gulf and eventually into Georgia and the Carolinas uh, towards next Monday and Tuesday. So we still have time to watch this. The rest of the country is going to stay active. Big heat dome over the south central United States, active weather across the upper Midwest, diving southeast to the Appalachians, and upper level lows spinning over New England with this frontal boundary here, not developing into anything tropical. And uh, we are going to see some active weather here, uh, probably some severe weather here this afternoon and night. Uh, heat advisories for the south central and central U.S., red flag warnings for uh, the mountainous areas for fire conditions. Here's a look at the upper level pattern. You can see multiple systems coming up and over this ridge uh, and into the Great Lakes and Midwest region over the next couple of days. Here's the predicted radar, and you can see we will see active weather across the Ohio Valley here this evening, uh, more action across the Dakotas, and then we'll move into the same areas for tomorrow uh, as we are going to see some pretty nasty storms here. The NAM model shows that we will have a complex over Indiana here um, late in the afternoon and into this evening, diving southeast into Kentucky and eventually dying across Tennessee and into the Appalachians by morning. Next complex follows it here into the same areas for tomorrow afternoon, a little farther south and west potentially though, maybe into the Tennessee Valley. And then another complex comes down Wednesday morning and any of these could produce some severe weather with them. I don't have a lot of time to get into the details, but obviously this will change. Um, these smaller scale features are more challenging the forecast, but you can see the slight risk today in two zones, one across the Ohio, Ohio Valley and the other across the Dakotas and Nebraska. We also have a marginal risk over the uh, Delaware Valley, Philly area into the Delmarva Peninsula. Best chances for tornadoes are going to be across southern Indiana and Illinois this evening, maybe stretching into Kentucky. And you can see the NATO cast shows that 5% chance here, southern Indiana and um, 
Louisville area, maybe Owensboro, Kentucky are highlighted in that zone. Strong winds, though, later on tonight with the next round of supercell-type storms across the Dakotas. We'll have some big hail in some of these as well. Then that shifts into uh, Iowa, Missouri, and Illinois for the day tomorrow. Marginal risk all the way down into the Carolinas along our boundary. Chance for some tornadoes as well tomorrow afternoon and evening, including Chicago, Des Moines, La Crosse, Milwaukee, and the Twin Cities. Severe weather, uh, also severe wind and hail uh, across this boundary. And then Wednesday, some of the same places will likely get hit again with some severe weather, especially Sioux Falls and maybe over to the Twin Cities. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Uh, I'm going to try to do these videos around lunchtime on my lunch breaks. Um, and as always, if there's anything that breaks weather-wise, you will see a post on my Facebook page and on my community page. But thank you so much for joining today. I hope you have a blessed day. And please uh, return again. Please consider subscribing as you don't want to miss the next video. Uh, I appreciate you guys. I give all the honor, all the glory and credit to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, this, is, this is my gift to you guys. Um, We've all been given gifts, whether or not we choose to believe in God and in Christ. Uh, God has created us and given us each gifts, and I hope that you are making the best of the gift that you have with your limited time here on earth. Uh, we are all in a stressful time right now. We're all working harder than we've ever had to for the dollar bill, it certainly seems. But uh, the good news is that Paul tells the uh, Galatian church, Paul uh, Galatians 6, 9, that, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And I think we all see the success that goes on with celebrities, athletes, the Olympics is going on, success that's going on. But what we don't see is all of the blood, sweat, and tears that goes into that, all of the, all of the sowing of these seeds, all of the, what we often see is weariness. But the good news is that we've been promised that in due season, and that's going to be on God's time, not on our time, if we don't give up then everything's going to come to fruition. It's not necessarily prosperity. That's not everybody's going to be rich. But what that means is if you stay faithful to the process, you will, in fact, see the results that are to be expected. And God will give those to us. He already has promised us eternal life if we have accepted Jesus as his Savior, as our Savior. Um, and that is the good news I wanted to share with you all today. So I hope you join me again next time, and I hope you all have a blessed day. Take care.